Ladies, welcome to the WMGA. Um, we're here for the fifth session of our swing session of our swing series. Um, my name is Fiona Meisner. I am the communications chair here at the WMGA. Um, so based on your feedback, we've gotten a lot of positive feedback. We are actually continuing this series and we do appreciate your thoughts and ideas on the topics that are relevant to your, uh, your membership, our membership. Um, one topic that was suggested in our most recent survey was golf equipment. And so this session is going to focus on this very important component to all of our games. So today we have brought Brian Fallon here. Uh, he is a master club fitter and he is also a PGA professional and senior golf pro at Westchester Country Club. So Brian is going to take us through the trends in the golf equipment industry as well as provide tips and hints to look for in researching if maybe new equipment might be right for you. Um, we are also gonna have Alexis Heos here. Alexis is also a member of Westchester uh, Country Club, and she's also a member of the WMGA Griscom Club. Griscom Club. Uh, she's going to be moderating the session. Uh, she is preparing for a professional golf career and she has worked extensively with Brian over the past several years to help fine tune her game. So we'd like to thank Brian and Alexis for their time and for particip uh, participating in this WMGA sp uh, swing series. So um, just so that you know, uh, those that, of you that are watching, the webinar is where you can see and hear the panelists, so you can hear me speak, you can see me, but you are not on video or microphone. So if you need to ask a question, um, you can enter it into a chat or a Q&A session. Um, there's like a little uh, thing on your screen there. So we can see if you have any questions that you want brought up. Um, finally, we're gonna also have this recorded and this will be uploaded to our WMGA communications channel on YouTube. So if there's something you wanna go back on, review, it'll be there for you. So I wanna thank everybody for coming, for joining us. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Alexis. Hi everyone, I'm Alexis Hios. Um, Brian and I have been working together uh, for several years now, probably ever since he started at Westchester. Um, and he's helped me with a lot of my equipment. Um, we do a lot of club fittings together, a lot of testing my equipment every year to make sure that I am ready and confident in it for tournament season. And so we have a bunch of questions to ask Brian about what type of equipment you should have, what's the best, and uh, so let's get started. Thanks, Brian, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. So let's jump right in. Um, so what are the benefits to getting a, a club fitting, knowing you're carrying the right clubs in your bag? Um, I would say, more importantly, I mean, technology is obviously extremely important, okay? I've seen some people out there who have decent golf swings, but just honestly have the inappropriate equipment. There is, as you know, everyone can carry 14 golf clubs in their bag. And as you see, let's just say specifically with ladies, they don't necessarily use all 14 of those. They're usually using, um, you know, half of those and just assuming that those are right. And I feel like technology nowadays has really, really improved. Uh, we, women necessarily are going to benefit from some higher lofted equipment just to get the spin rates up and get those things up in the air and traveling as opposed to just little grounders and line drives. So I found that a lot of the new equipment is more is higher lofted and that generates more spin and generates more air time. So I find that that's been very, very helpful. Um, can you discuss the effects and the importance of club length and flex? I know sure. we've talked a lot about that together. Yes. Yeah, that's actually a great question. Uh, I could probably go on for hours with it, but we'll just keep it simple <laughs> at this point. Um, you know, I'll give you a great example. This is a perfect example. My fiance Taylor, I was giving her a fit, okay? She is five feet zero, okay? We'll call it, okay? <laughs> she swings at a really good rate of speed, okay? So she is specifically ladies length, possibly even an inch shorter, but her club head speed with her seven iron is actually 66 miles an hour, okay? So to give you an idea, and the range, anything under 60 is in ladies flex, and then 60 to 70 is light flex. 
for seniors, we want to call it that. Uh, 70 to 80 is regular, 80 to 90 is stiff, and then 90 to 105 is extra stiff. So anybody probably not really knowing club fitting would say, here you go, Taylor, here are some standard ladies equipment, good luck. So that really doesn't uh, apply to her. She needs light flex clubs and ladies length, not exactly an off the rack type of situation. So custom fitting is very important for someone and it's been a tremendous improvement in her golf game. So I would say, and it's extremely important to do that. Uh, I will go quickly on the other side. If I gave a fit to a woman who is swinging at, let's call it 55 miles an hour, <clears throat> which is in that lady's uh, flex range, but she's five foot 10, all right? Then she should not be receiving ladies length clubs. She might wanna be in the men's standard length. So another one, not exactly off the rack, she would need custom equipment, ladies flex, men's standard length, things like that. So there's a lot that goes into it. As a, that's why we, we uh, recommend not getting the off the rack equipment for, for ladies unless they have at least been looked at and or um, you know worked on with their swing speed. Hopefully that helps. So how how often would you recommend that someone changes clubs? And maybe we can go a little bit into wedges as well. Sure. Sure. Um, I would answer that with a more general, actually the answer to that is not just A to B. It has to be how often do you play? Okay. Um, I would say if someone's playing 10 times a year, I think you're good for a while. I would say for you who plays or practices probably five to six times or even seven times a week, um, then equipment does tend to wear out. Not a, ten, not a ton on the wood side, but uh, wedges specifically will really lose their grooves and that will hinder you around the greens or in the bunker when you're trying to get some spin, which is obviously distance control. So for you specifically, Alexis, who, or any ladies who are playing five, six, seven times a week, practicing, taking a lot of divots, hitting a lot of shots out of the bunkers, um, I will give you one quick tip here. Uh, if you can slide your fingernail through the grooves of your wedges, it's time for new ones. If you try to slide your fingernail through the grooves and they catch, then you're good for a little bit more time. That's just a little quick old guy. Roger Cleveland actually taught me how. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so let's get into some grips. Um, when should you change your grips and what are the different kinds of grips and the benefits to them? Okay. So obviously technology has come out with all these new alignment grips where the, there's ridges or ribs underneath to help you understand where you're going to grip it. There are multi-compound, which is a combination of a cord, which is more of a firm grip and a rubber at the bottom. So you have dual type of grip there. Uh, a lot of grips that I like to recommend, I'm going to give you an example to possibly a couple older golf, lady golfers or men golfers. Some of the dry tech from Wynn is a more cushiony grip. So if any, anyone has any trouble, um, for example, I had a uh, lesson the other day with a gentleman who has arthritis and they, he was unable to squeeze the grip hard. So I, gave, I recommended he gets a oversized grip that with more cushion, which allowed him to not have to squeeze so hard, but able to still be able to control the club a lot more. So every single person I could probably start from scratch with and ask them. It's not just a general answer anymore for everything. But um, the tech, I would say once you start seeing the traction of your grip go away and you, know, you start seeing, I'll give you an unfortunate example. I went to grab a club out of someone's club the other day and it like disintegrated in my hands. Like literally the grip was falling apart in pieces. So I'm like, it might be time for now. Um, but it's always good to, and, and you know what, if you have a consistent grip, as in like where you hold it on the club, you're gonna see a wear pattern pretty quickly, okay? So once you start seeing a wear pattern, it's probably time for a new set of grips. And I recommend that mostly maybe once or twice a year, depending on how often you play. I know I have that issue. I always have my thumbprint in my grip. Not an issue. It means you're consistent, and that's, a, that's good. Yes. Um, so let's talk about golf balls. What about the technology and which ones to use? Especially, I know a lot has to do with swing speed, but also I think a lot has to do with preference as well. 
Sure. Right? Um, I would say when I'm doing a ball fitting, whether it's a woman, man, senior, junior, whatever it is, I like to, I like to work from the grain backwards. Okay, so that means short game I start with and then work on the long game. So a lot of balls now have certain compression or certain, you know, the new Pro-V, Pro-VX, Chrome Soft, Chrome Soft X, everything like that. So much technology in these golf balls, um, how many layers are in there, the whole thing. But my most important thing I do is I start out with a um, Chrome Soft, Callaway Chrome Soft X or a Callaway Chrome Soft go down to the short game area and have the, uh, my person I'm fitting hit 10, 20, 30 shots, little pit shots or little high shots with all with two different types of balls and see which one has the most reaction to the green. Uh, you know, and then we work backwards to maybe 30 yard shots, 50 yard shots. And then you kind of work around with the irons and then the driver. So uh, if someone also has a slower club head speed, then not necessarily recommending something that's not appropriate for them, such as a hard golf ball, maybe a softer ball for some more compression would be key. So it's not like you're swinging at a slow rate of speed and you're hitting a frozen rock. Um, you're actually hitting something that's going to have some trampoline effect, which is a softer compression ball or lower compression ball. So yeah, absolutely. And a lot of, another answer is a lot of times in the wintertime, we have some play, November, and it's 42 degrees. You probably don't want to be hitting a hard golf ball. It's going to be it's going to like, you know, rebound off nothing. You need a little softer compression. So it's about weather, it's about club head speed, and it's about what you're looking for around the green. Awesome. So um, I know there's like, uh, Sarah and I went, and Lori went to the PGA show this year, and I know you were there. There was some really cool, really great new technology out there from all the brands, Calais, Titleist, Ping. Um, from what you saw, what are some of the new trends in the industry that you're seeing in golf clubs right now? So trends, I would say a lot of time now you'll see, you're seeing a lot of companies having a lot more options. I'll give you an example. Almost every line has about three or four options. Okay. You have your kind of tour pro iron, you know, middle of the road iron, super forgiving iron and like very high launching iron. Okay. And a lot of that has to do with technology club fitting wise. We want to see a certain spin rate on a golf, golf club, golf ball, certain uh, launch angle. Okay. So a lot of these new uh, companies or all companies are coming out with new clubs that have a lot of options. So every fit is very different. I try to start every single fit from scratch and work from there with the person's club head speed, launch angle, and every company out there has now worked with that. So for example, a lot of ladies would probably, like I said, needed some maybe some high launch or more spin to generate carry. Every company has come out with that type of golf club. Okay, so it seems like the trend is <clears throat> almost all companies are working with the variety of golfer, no matter what, what you are, they have an option for it. And I think it's pretty cool that they're not just segregating on anything. Everything is open from A to B to C to D and down the line. Yeah, it was uh, it was cool to see some of the new stuff that they have out. I know we got to test some of it, so which was a lot of fun. And now everything's out, so you can go go out and get it. Exactly. Um, I know we did this when my recent club fitting back in October, but um, we had a, always discussed hybrids and woods. But yep. the new trend now, as I see, is blending sets, and I know I have a blended set. Um, so if you can expand on what your perspective is on hybrids versus woods, and maybe you can explain a little about what a blended set is and how it can help help, help us in our game. Absolutely. So obviously hybrid, I'm a tremendously, I'm a tremendous fan of the hybrids. Okay. I personally in my golf bag don't carry any fairway woods because I just have yet to find one that works. And I carry two, two hybrids, a two hybrid and a three hybrid. And then my set starts at a four end. Um, just comfort level, not pre not promoting or anything. It's just something I prefer to do. Um, fairway woods, I've actually helped a lot of people. Back to your question real quick about the trends. Mm -hmm. Don't forget that a lot of companies have now strengthened their lofts on the golf clubs. Okay. So if I put a seven iron in somebody's hand that's from 2020 and a seven iron in someone's hand that's from 2000. 12, 
they're going to hit the ball 15 yards longer guaranteed. Okay, because you're effectively hitting a stronger length club, a lofted club. If a normal seven iron is, let's just call it 30 degrees, I'm giving a total example. Actually, I'll give you a pitching wedge, for example, because this is why I'm talking about my wood thing. A pitching wedge back in the day was traditionally 48 degrees, all right? And then most people get like a gap wedge, 52, 56, and 60. Now, some of the pitching wedges are down in the 44 degrees area, okay? So let's just say now you need a 44 degree. Well, let's call it 45. 45, then you need a gap wedge, 50, then like a 54, 58, or a 56, 60. You now have to add a wedge in your bag to allow for not having such a huge gap in between your pitching wedge and the rest of your other lofted wedges. Normally back in the day, people would have a three wood and a five wood. I've been promoting people getting four woods. The number four wood, not four woods, okay? So <laughs> take away your three wood, take away your five wood, get a four wood. It's about a quarter inch shorter, but it launches really high and so much easier to control than a straight up three wood off the deck or on a tee. So, because you kind of have to take away, now all of a sudden these new, new set, iron sets, you have 15 golf clubs. So you're only allowed to have 14. So I've been promoting people getting the, taking a three and five out, hang them up on the wall or throw them out or hand them to your grandkids and get a four wood. And that brings you back down to your 14 club set. Does that make sense? Yeah. So to touch upon that more, the blended set, which I actually currently work with, because the longer irons have traditionally been more difficult to hit. So what I talked about before of having that kind of Tor Pro iron, the middle of the road iron and the game improving iron, it's been very popular to have your longer irons, such as maybe the three, the four or the five, or even the six, be in that middle of the road iron, maybe a little bigger, a little more forgiving. And then the rest of your irons be more in that precise type of club. Okay, I'll give you an example, not to push any company, but I'm just giving a total example. Callaway, I have Apex regular, which is more the middle of the road, four, five, six, seven. And then I have in the more precise precision type of clubs, eight, nine pitch gap in the pro version. Okay, so I can kind of be a little more precise. I can work it a little bit um, and I can be more forgiving with my four, five, and six. No, we did that. We did that with our with uh, my set, having the uh, Titleist and having T200s up through six iron. I'm not a fan of a five iron, so I ended up getting the T300 or I carry a hybrid. So I know we've talked a lot about that, of the benefits of a blended set. Um, now, I know you just touched upon wedges and stuff. Um, and wedges are super important to the golf game, obviously. It's where you're going to make most of your scoring shots. So... Um, you can talk about the benefits of carrying a gap wedge and a lob wedge because I know some people don't necessarily carry those in their bag. I, I know I've fiddled around with not carrying a lob wedge and just carrying a sand wedge and maybe explain how those wedges can really help change your game. Sure, sure, absolutely. Um, I'll give an example for ladies specifically. The higher the loft, the better you're going to do when you're around the greens. Just I mean, overall in general, but ladies specifically, whether it's a bunker shot or anything that you're trying to get some high loft to, my concern is that people skip the whole gap wedge thing and they just say, I don't need it, whatever, you know? And if you go from a pitching wedge now that's 44 to 45 degrees and you go from pitching wedge to sand wedge, which could be 55 degrees or 54, you have an eight degree gap in between there and that's way too much. You're going to be sitting there from 100 and 10 yards and not know what club to hit. You're gonna have a 20 to 30 yard problem. I would say, like for me, me for example, I go pitching wedge, gap wedge, which is 50 degrees, 54, 58. I've, no, I've notoriously been traditional for a 52, 56, 60, but I, know, I don't like having six degrees of gap in between some clubs. I didn't want to go 50 to 56. So you have to, I adjust it to it and I, it works fine but I do recommend having that higher lofted wedge just for specialty shots. Um, whatever ladies are in the audience today, whatever golf club you might be playing at, you know, on a regular basis, whether they have deep bunkers or, you know, Westchester has usually very deep bunkers. So I'm trying to get that club face wide open and 
a 60 degree or a 58 is much, you know, so is, is important. So, I mean, I, I recommend the wedges as being, those are your scoring irons, they're called, quote, scoring irons. So they should be really paid attention to. And I, I recommend about four degrees of gap in between each wedge to keep it consistent with your distance control. Awesome. Now I know this is something that we do every year. And it's one thing that uh, I have found to be the biggest game changer in my game as well. And I know um, you've helped out my parents with this too. Um, gappings. Yeah. And um, I don't know if you can, I, you had told me the story about our club champ a few years ago at Westchester, but maybe you can tell the ladies about that story and, and then expand on what a gapping is and, and how it's helped people games. Absolutely. Um, gapping is, and this is kind of, be, I'll start from the beginning with just the idea of it. The idea of gapping is, or the process is, and not every, every club will have the luxury of the equipment that we have at Westchester, but we have a machine called TrackMan, which I'm sure anyone who's watched golf can, they show the tracer of it and the distances and the apexes and the carries. We use that. I personally like to have everybody hit three golf balls quality shots, not like, oh, I hit one great, and the next one you top it. There's no point in counting a bad shot. Um, three golf shots with each club, carry number and total number. And then I take an average out of the three. And that's your number, to be honest with you, okay? If there's a, a couple of clubs, I think Alexis had it in the past, where maybe some clubs were butting up against each other, where some clubs are going similar numbers. Well, that didn't really make any sense. And then we possibly go and double check that some lofts have been adjusted throughout their time of being in the trunk or the garage or hitting off turf nowadays, like actual AstroTurf can affect the loft and line of a golf club. So if your golf club has been hitting off turf for a long time and it's supposed to be 27 degrees and it's bent to 25, it's gonna butt up against your four iron when it's supposed to be a five iron. So gapping is super important. Um, the story that Alexis is talking about is our club champ, Connie Marlott, who, two years ago, actually asked for gapping and she was surprised that she was hitting it shorter than she was expecting. 10 yards shorter, that's a full club. She didn't like freak out and try to swing harder. She just accepted it, took the numbers I wrote down for her, won the club championship and put a bottle of wine on my desk. I said, thanks. So <clears throat> that was great. But gapping is very, very important. It allows you to, I do it probably 10 to 15 times, 20 times a year with various members. I send them an email or they, I, I, rent, I write down the information and give them that piece of paper right there. And they keep it in their bag or their pocket or whatever. And they use it on the golf course. That's not cheating or anything. You can, you're allowed to have a, a note on your bag that says, I'm hitting my eight iron consistently carrying 115, you know, something like that. Um, I think it's important for irons to understand carry rather than total because you're usually hitting those up in the air and you need to know how far they're carrying, not how far they roll. 25 yards. I'd rather them know how far they carry. Um, so carrying and total is super important. Three good shots each, give the average, and it's been helpful for you as well, right? Yeah, that's big, big time. I mean, I think we do a check usually twice a year. I know we haven't done one yet this year, but we definitely will be. Um, what, what would you recommend as a number between each of your clubs? Because I know, you know, I know I've had the issue where I've had a club be, you know, consistently pitching wedge through eight iron can be 12 yards, let's say. And then you get up through my seven to five irons and maybe that's a little more like 15 to 20. What, what would you recommend it be between each club and, and, is, and how consistent should it be? I like about between 10 and 15 yards. That's just my personal preference. Um, when you get to the, obviously the longer clubs, let's just call it driver, berry wood hybrid, you're probably gonna have more. So I'm just giving an example. If your drive goes 250, your three wood should probably not be 245 or 240. You know, you should be in 25-ish range. And then your hybrid might be in that 200 range. So the higher clubs or the longer clubs should have a bigger gap. But the last thing you want is to have a 20-yard gap between your pitching wedge and nine iron. Okay? So if you're 100 yards out and your pitching wedge goes 90 and your nine iron goes 110, what the heck are you supposed to do, right? So I recommend that 10 and 15 yards between all your irons is a pretty good number. When you get into the wedges, that's a little different story. Um, I don't want to touch upon it too much, but most wedges are not exactly 
full golf swings. They're usually that kind of 75% swing where you're trying to either knock it down, go easy, chip it, go low, go high. So that's not normally specifically super important, but that gap wedge, pitching wedge, you know, you know, numbers should be in that pitching wedge, nine, eight, seven, six, all that should be about 10 to 15 yards. And if you start seeing it where there's four or five yards in between each club, then there's something going on with your lofts of your club if you're hitting correct golf swings. Well, that's good information. Thank you. So I'm going to turn it back to Fiona and Sarah for some Q&A. Okay, cool. Yeah, I've got some great questions here. So the first one, is it better to have heavier or lighter irons if you have a slower swing speed? I would recommend, there's two schools of thought to that. I, 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 initially, you just want to automatically assume lighter is better, okay? And light, uh, ladies clubs are traditionally meant, whether it's a specifically ladies club only, they are, they are meant to be lighter. Their swing weights are lighter, the shafts are extremely light, whether it's 40 grams, 50 grams for an iron. So lighter is traditionally better to generate more club head speed, which then usually generates more distance. Um, heavier doesn't necessarily produce anything terrible, but it's not generally gonna produce any type of club head speed increase. I would say the lighter the club head speed for ladies or club head, then the better it will be. Okay. What's the best shaft flex for ladies? So the traditional shaft flex is just a woman's flex. There is no, you know, there's no stiff or right, you know, so like I mentioned before about the numbers, um, there is usually a, and I would say, I'm not saying it's a good or bad thing, but most women's shafts don't have a lot of options if you have ever been in a club fit. Normally stiff, extra stiff, regular, they usually have 10 to 15 options. When you get into the light flex or the senior flex or the ladies flex, you tend to have one or two and that's really it. Um, most of it is either a gram weight, which could be 40 grams or 50 grams. Um, but the standard woman's flex is just a standard woman's flex. There's not a lot of difference to that. Should the grips be consistent across all clubs? I like to have that, yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't want to grab my driver that is an uh, oversized grip, and then I go to my um, seven iron that is a standard size grip that usually doesn't really work out. I like to be consistent. Inconsistency with your grips can kind of mess with the grip pressure. And also, a little bit of a tip here, if you're not looking to get fit, but you're also wondering if your grips are the correct size, when you're holding your grip, Try and find out where your ring finger meets with the palm of your hand, okay? If there's a big gap in between your ring finger tip and the palm of your hand, then your grips are way too big. If your ring finger tip is squishing into the palm of your hand, the grips are too small. You just want to have it gent gently touching them. That's the correct size. But I would prefer to and recommend keeping them consistent size. Right, uh, one more question on golf balls. Do golf balls have an expiration date? I don't recommend you hitting something that you found in your great grandfather's garage uh, that's been there for 65 years. Um, but I do think since all golf balls are made of, of rubber inside and, and all the urethane outside and all these types of coatings that they will have a tendency to not have the same trampoline effect as a brand new golf ball. Another example is don't be fishing for golf balls in a water hazard because I'm pretty sure that the waterlogged golf ball doesn't go too well. So that, I would say they don't have an expiration specifically, but they probably have a tendency to not do their perform their best if they've been sitting around for a while. So we're going to start to wrap things up now. Um, again, we want to thank Brian and Francis for their time. Um, one quick thought I had, um, is there any trends now in putters? Is there any advanced equipment? Because um, a lot of times we, we forget about the putters. Everybody's thinking about their drives and yeah. what floor. So any recommendations or suggestions? Um, I would say, I'll give you two, two, two recommendations that I've had, I've found very successful, okay? The Ping GLE putter is excellent for ladies. It's the correct weight correct length, you know, not length for every lady, but it's a really nice club. It's got different varieties of head shapes. 
you know, kind of a half moon, mallet, blade. There's also one that's very popular that I have noticed with some ladies, not necessarily beginners, but all kinds. Callaway has a triple track, which is a putter that has three lines on it, red, white, and blue, that allows you to kind of line your ball up with that track that should be aligned up to the hole, or at least your target, okay? Those have been very helpful for ladies I've found so far this year to help get the ball in the hole faster. Um, I would say length is very important. Um, I would see not a lot of, you know, most average, I don't know what the average lady height is, but you don't want something that's 35 inch length putter and you're five foot one, okay? Uh, once again, my fiance Taylor, I cut her putter down um, and it's been a tremendous difference. She had a 33 inch, I got 32 inch and she's making more putts, it's just more control. And um, that's easy to, to determine if just a little bit of a quick fitting by who, or someone to take an eye on what it looks like. Perfect, thank you so much. So as always, um, everybody that can hear us, we welcome your feedback. There'll be a short survey that goes out to you. Um, we will continue our swing series. We'd like to thank you all for your time. And we'd like to thank you for being part of the WMGA. So thanks again, Brian, Alexis, Sarah. And we'll see you next time.